Well, hello, YouTube. Got a lot of light <clears throat> coming through here right now. Boatload of light coming, so I apologize for that. Uh, I want to talk to you about the heavyweight division. Uh, maybe I'll talk about some other stuff here when I'm done. But, uh, all right, we had a couple of big fights last week, and what I'm seeing shaping up, and here's what would have happened back in my day that most of you look back to one of the best, if not the best, era in boxing. Um, I'm going to tell you how that this heavyweight deal would pan out today and then I'm going to probably tell you that I don't think it will and what I think will happen all right to me the only three very very good heavyweight fights that I've seen in the past five six years has been uh Fury fighting Wilder. Boy, they both put on a display, a display. Uh, gr great fights. To me now, great fights. Um, but other than that, I haven't seen anything that's impressed me. I didn't see anything last week that impressed me. I hear everybody, I mean, even Teddy Atlas, oh my gosh, you know, this Anthony Joshua is back. Uh, I, see, I'm looking at boxing through a different lens than you all are. I, I never saw Anthony Joshua arrive. Uh, that was the type of guy that would be a big, very good amateur boxer. But once he'd get in the heavyweight division professionally, uh, it wouldn't last long. Somebody would end up mopping the floor up with him. Uh, well, why do you say that? Because it's the history of the sport. It's what has repeatedly happened. All right. Now, I'll... What I just said being said, I don't think any of them are that good, to be honest with you. Uh, boxing is in, a, in the heavyweight division, I'll speak for. Boxing in general is in transition as well, but I'm talking the heavyweight division here. Uh, the heavyweight division, we're in transition. It's just lagging and lagging and lagging and lagging on. And uh, it's just taken a long time to complete the transition. But greatness is coming, and you won't be, it's not greatness as in, okay, Anthony Joshua gets a title shot with Fury, he beats Fury, and he goes on to defend the crown against four or five different guys that aren't really talented historically when when look uh, when looked back to history uh, are not great not, not that good and but everybody's gonna jump on the bandwagon is he the greatest ever no it's nobody <laughs> you can mention nobody in the past 25 years and say they were the greatest you could go all the way back through the 90s uh, and you're not going to find anybody remotely close to being mentioned as the greatest. Uh, one guy, Lennox Lewis, I would mention him as a great one, but I would mention him as a great one because of his amateur, what he did in the amateurs combined with what he did in the professional heavyweight ranks. Uh, but in the top five of the greatest or anything like that not even close uh probably not top 10 
uh, maybe not even close there. If I sat back and started thinking about it. Uh, I'm finding also that old timers in the sport are getting along to be able to go along. And I don't do anything like that. This is the wrong place to come for mess like that. Uh, I'm not going to candy coat something because Teddy Atlas is candy coating it or this other guy over here is candy coating it. I mean, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. Just not. Just not. All right. Um, this would be the best possible case scenario of what we got to work with today to be a fan of today in the heavyweight boxing top 10 division. And the greatest scenario I believe any of us could hope for would be for this to happen. Uh, Fury and Usyk fight. Fury beats Usyk. Uh, Fury then signs and fights Anthony Joshua. And I'm telling you right now, Styles will win fights. And a disinterested uh, Well, now I'm not going to say, let me go back and scratch that disinterested. Uh, styles make fights, and Joshua, I believe, will beat the pants off of Usyk. Yeah, uh, styles make fights. That's what I see happening. I don't even think it'll be a contest. I think. Fury will get knocked out. Uh, it won't be nothing nice about it. Uh, if Meathead there, meaning Anthony Joshua, can have any cardio about him to go past six rounds really going, uh, which he probably does not really possess, I mean really going at it, he's going to knock Fury out, and Fury's going to ride off into the sunset, and then then it's going to open up to who else is it going to be? Uh, is it going to continue with Usyk and Joshua? What's going to happen? Uh, that that would that's where it'll, there'll be an opening to somebody great really coming along that are coming through right now. We just don't know who it's going to be. That's going to take the division by storm and be the man. Uh, which right now, unfortunately, we haven't possessed in years. I am, haven't possessed since the uh, Klitschko started getting really old. But before then, we had two men. And Americans like to think that the Klitschkos were no good. However, I would remind my American brethren that we sent fighter after fighter after fighter, big mouth after big mouth after big mouth. And these guys got knocked out till. A uh, few of them didn't get knocked out, and Big Mouse from England got it too, you know. It's just what happened. Uh, you know who the champ was? There was no confusion in the mental condition of the champion. It's another thing, which is everybody's mentally ill today. Well, guess what? Uh, everybody was mentally ill 50 years ago. The problem is, is you're just dwelling on it, and everybody's being a victim. They're being a victim. I'm a victim of mental illness. I got to go out here and promote it and talk about it. Uh, now, mess was going on back then as well. It's just people chose to fight it, fight it in different ways. Uh, today, people love being victims, you know. So, uh, it is what it is. All right, we got another scenario here. Usyk beats, which I don't think is going to happen. Usyk beats uh, Fury. And then we've got comers for Usyk. And I don't think nobody out there, Anthony Joshua on his best day, I don't think is going to be able to 
cardio actively be able to uh, beat Usyk at any given day, at any given time. Styles and fighters make fights. Uh, they've tried it, what, two times, three times? I forget. They, they've tried it twice, I guess. Uh, he's going to get no closer at it. And as a matter of fact, Lee, if Usyk just keeps getting stronger, it'll be the worst for Josh or the worst for wear against anybody because this division is artificially large. Most of you do not understand that. You don't really deeply know your boxing history. You may know a lot about boxing, but your boxing history you're you're not really really analyzing it as you should uh we always have a period of one two three giants and we also have a period come where jack tears the giant's head off and the division kind of self-corrects um we and this has happened, and maybe these guys weren't quite as big. Uh, you can kind of look back at Willard, and there's another Italian guy that held the championship. He was as big as uh, Fury, but a lot more muscular. He was a bigger man. He was, looked more like an Anthony Joshua physique, not just like it, but uh, I just forget this guy's name. But he was, I believe he was Italian or Greek, and he held the title for a while. And... Uh, he got his clock clean too, and uh, there need to be some smaller guys come up and challenge some of these bigger guys and get them on out because it's not interesting. Uh, it's just it's just not. It's interesting to you, but you haven't really seen interesting. It's more difficult for you younger folks to go back and look at fights that happened thirty. Uh, 40, 50, 60, 80 years ago and really get into a fight because that's the history of it. Uh, but I'm telling you, the fights of today, if we get these guys back, uh, guys like the guys in yesteryear, boy, you are in for a treat. And if you love boxing, uh, and actually seeing two heavyweights strike instead of dance around and wait for a punch and all this crap you see today. If you'd want to see some real guys really going at it, uh, with the technology we have today, it would be a hundred times more exciting than it was in the 1920s or the 1960s and into the 70s with Ali or Norton or back to the 50s with uh, Marciano and Walcott and all this, these glory days of fighting and back up to all of this. It'll be very exciting to watch. You'll be like, oh my gosh. And that will be your era, young people, and you'll have something to really sing and dance about to the kids. And you, you will anyway. You'll have things to sing and dance about to the kids because everything's just getting weaker and falling apart. And you're going to be looking at this week, what I know is a weak generation you're growing up in. And uh, you're going to think that you guys were the cat's meow compared to the kids going up when you're getting older like me. And, uh, and that's natural, and it's normal, and that's the way it's been. Boxing was harder. Uh, it, you'd be hard-pressed to pull anybody out of the 60s, Ali, uh, Liston, any of them, and go back and fight the Jersey Joe Walcotts, the Joe Lewises, the Rocky Marcianos. Uh, the style of boxing in that day was going to punching and hitting hard. Uh, we kind of got a replay of that in the 80s with uh, a young Mike Tyson, and we'll get it back. It's coming back. Uh, fighting's going to be successful. But if Usyk wins, 
then what? What's the what's the scenario there? Really? Uh, it, maybe it'll be a better scenario if that happens, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Joseph Parker's the only one that's moderately moving. He's slow as all get out. Uh, nothing impressive, but it's very impressive to you because you don't see heavyweights move, nor do you see them move quickly, nor do you see them uh, have the wherewithal to be able to uh, sustain and and keep energy throughout a fight. Uh, but that would be an interesting fight. Uh, Joseph Parker and uh, and uh, Usyk, that'd be a good fight. But I'm not seeing boxing going great directions. And if Fury wins, we won't get an Anthony Joshua fight anyway, folks. I'm going to spell out how this is going to work. Uh, which is one of the bigger points, but I got drew off of that in this video. If Anthony Joshua, uh, if if Fury beats Usyk, that's done. We got a crown champion. He's holding all the cookies. He's got the whole candy uh, cookie jar. All right. Uh, he's going to turn around and fight Usyk again, and then probably turn around and fight him again. He'll, he'll want three fights with Usyk to say he's had two trilogies and compare himself to Ali, a guy he will never compare to. Never. Never. Uh, couldn't lace that man's boots up. I'm sorry, kids. Sorry as I can be. I, I'm not the biggest Ali fan known to man. I've got on him hard when I felt like he deserved it. He wasn't a perfect guy. Not, well, I know none of us are, but I've done some truth telling on him that I'm telling you all right now. There is not a top 10 heavyweight in any of the boxing organizations that would really be qualified to lace Muhammad Ali's boots, nor prime uh, Joe Frazier, nor a prime uh, George Foreman. Or Kenny Norton. Uh, I could even take it back, since I'm talking 70s here, uh, Joe, uh, Jerry Cooney. Uh, just don't understand this sport. And you young trainers don't either. If you're a trainer and you're in your 40s, you still learning. you just like everybody else. you still learning. And uh, there's another thing I'm going to go into with, with boxing right now. Uh, somebody we consider a dear Christian brother was talking about minimal movement and he would be right. See, there are different thoughts in this sport. A lot of different thoughts, a lot of different aspects, a lot of different styles. Uh, a lot of different ways to skin a cat. All right. Uh, he gave an excellent analysis. Uh, and it's Real Talk Boxing. If you don't know who he is, go over there and subscribe to him. Wonderful man. Uh, we are brothers. Our king is the same king. Uh, who is the king of all kings. Uh that is that on that. Uh, but he gave an excellent analysis on the uh, Joshua Ngannou fight. And he took something somewhere. And he intelligently did it. Was going into movement. And now I'm paraphrasing him here. You should go watch where he has analyzed the Ngannou uh, and AJ fight. Uh, but I, I'm picking a little pieces here and I'm inserting because I'm paraphrasing and I can't remember perfectly. Uh, but he's talking about doing a movement and moving as much as you need to move. Taking a, taking a glance, a glancing blow to set something else up. 
100% correct and spot on. Okay, that being said, there is other things that you can do, and maybe you're in other situations. Maybe the, the guy, this style works better for this guy. And move more than you need to move. The problem is today, nobody can sustain the cardio to be moving. Uh, you go back, you look at Mike Tyson's fight. He was moving. Uh, that man was move. He wasn't moving. He was moving. Uh, he wasn't moving. He was moving. See? And he was able to sustain. And uh, the problem is today, nobody can sustain. The bigger problem is today is why nobody can sustain. And they can't sustain because they're not training to sustain. They're putting way too much muscle uh, on their frames. They are, uh, and when you do that, you absorb, your muscles absorb all, all the, a lot of the oxygen and other nutrients you need. They'll freeze up, they'll pump up, and it will slow you down, and it will stop you. Uh, there's a variable of uh, uh, physics going on inside the body that, create, that, that this happens. Uh, what we're trying to do, for, as for an example, uh, we are trying to build muscle through high repetitions now certain there sometimes we work some body parts and uh, it's almost as if we're power lifting uh, squats would be one thing uh, but the legs are a, a large muscle group and they have the ability to sustain quite easily uh, over smaller uh, mu muscle groups and But where it's a constant mix of everything going forward. Uh, it's not cross training, I can tell you that. Uh, it's not, uh, I forget the names of these people. They say, go do this, you'll do it, get strong like Benavidez or this guy over here, the guy down the street. And no offense to them guys or the guy down the street. But we're we're not doing that. What the way the way we're doing things is uh, almost one hundred percent with some minor things thrown in there, minor baby things thrown in there, things that I saw, things I was taught in the sixties and seventies, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. And furthermore, I believe that guys back then were more bad to the bone than they are now, had bigger hearts, and, uh, and of course, there's more time involved with what we do. You can't go to the gym an hour and a half a day, two hours a day, walk off expecting to do what, what, what we're attempting to do now. Uh, they ain't going to cut it. Uh, you ain't going to be eating cookies uh, and having cooking class. And that's another thing. I'm so bad, upset with Boxing USA. We are going to get beat. We will have the lowest medal count, the biggest beating that, I, that the United States has ever suffered uh, th this summer at the Paris Olympics. You mark my words on that. They are concentrating on things that, and, um, and the other thing, they don't know their history. Let me tell you guys something. We are in the month where in 1980, the guy that was in charge of Boxing USA, uh, the top uh, trainers, 
that were in Boxing USA, our amateur program, and a lot of boxers and a team doctor and, and a team trainer. Uh, a lot of people went down in a, a plane crash in Poland in 1980. And we were gearing up for the the Summer Olympics in 1980. Used to be, you waited four years and you had a Winter Olympics and you had a Summer Olympics. Now every two years you have one of those Olympics. It's made it less interesting. Viewership of the Olympics has dropped and it's not taken as seriously anymore. And there's not, not, not the pride's not there. And that, that's all to hell in a handbasket, too. And we need to get that back. <clears throat> I'm going to finish this. Thanks for listening to my rambling. I want to tell everybody something. America is very sick. We are eat up with a cancer that is taking the nation from north to south and for the, from its farther reaches west and east. And it's eating the entire body of the United States and our territories. And if we don't stand up right now and start defending truth, honesty, integrity, morals, and decency, which everybody is born understanding these rights and wrongs, they're inherent. My king has given the, the, the thought process to know when you're doing right and wrong. My king has given to you, and we had better start using that and getting our country cleaned up. And if we don't, all this boxing is going to mean nothing for anybody. Uh, the house over there you want to get, the car or the truck you're planning on getting, the, the clothes you wear, the food you put in your mouth, everything is fixing to change for you. Americans had better stand up and start taking care and placing their brothers and sisters first. We have got to start placing one another first again. It is a good thing to be patriotic towards your your leadership and, and your flag and your country. Uh, only when it's taken and put above my king is it turned into a warped sick thing. But it is a beautiful thing when you defend the brothers and sisters inside your country, fellow American. It is a wonderful thing when you do that. It is a high noble cause. The Bible itself, uh, Christ himself, there is none greater than he who gives his life for that of his friends. And we won't even stand up to fight for justice. Uh, I'll spell out to every single one of you right here as I end this. Freedom has never been free. Freedom has never been purchased with a dollar or a pound or a Dutch mark. The only way freedom can be purchased is through blood. Now, y'all think about that. And if we, it's coming to a point, if we ain't willing to sacrifice some of that, uh, we are completely going to be taken over, pushed down in misery, and most of us are going to be dead because that's what they're wanting. That's what the leaders are wanting. Wake up. Don't fool yourself. So, God's blessings to my friends. Much love to all of you had to finish up with those strong words. I hope that every one of you were capable of understanding what I was saying. And uh, do something good this week. It's Tuesday now. You got a few days left. Try to do something good for somebody this week. You'll be glad you did.